Hello! Today we are going to be talking about garbage-free Java programming. This is particularly important when you are developing real-time, low-latency applications that cannot be paused by any GC activity. But what do we mean by garbage-free Java programming? Are we going to be turning off the GC altogether? No, that's actually not possible. What we're going to do instead is we're never going to allow garbage to go to the GC, so the GC has nothing to do. And what do we mean by that? We're never going to be allowing a object reference to go out of scope. We're going to pull this reference in the object pooling so we can reuse it. We're going to save it. Whatever we do, we're never going to let uh, instances get out of scope and be collected by the GC. Cool, but how do we actually do that? Well, the first thing you do is avoid creating immutable objects that cannot be reused. Uh, immutable objects, they cannot be reused. You create it once and then you have to fold it away and create a new one. Strings is a good example of that. If you, want, if you have to create a bunch of strings, you're probably going to be releasing those strings to the GC. So, immutable objects is something you want to avoid. You want to use mutable objects instead. And because mutable objects can be reused, we're going to be extensively use object pooling. For example, for the string example, we can use a string builder, which is a mutable string, and then we can pull instance of a string builder and keep reusing them and returning them uh, as much as you want. So if you have to return like four strings to a color of your object, you can get string builders from a pool populate the string builder with the contents of the string you want to return and return the string builder as a char sequence. So you're not going to be returning a string which is an immutable object, you're going to be returning a char sequence which is your string builder uh, under the hood. Another thing we're going to be doing is using Java as a syntax language. What do we mean by that? We're going to avoid using the JDK. Uh, for example, the Collections API create garbage. If you use a hash map, if you add the an entry to the hash map and remove it, you're going to be creating garbage under the hood without even knowing. So we have to be very careful when you use the JDK or any third party libraries because you never know if they're creating garbage or not. So that's something we need to avoid. That's how we say we use Java as a syntax language because we're not really using all the Java libraries and JDK that comes with Java unless, of course, we know they create zero garbage. One way to know if your application is creating garbage is to run the JVM with the minus verbose GC option. By doing that, the JVM is going to log any GC activity that takes place. So ideally, you want to see no logging there. So if you see any logging, that means the GC is doing its thing, collecting garbage, and that means you have GC overhead in your application. Another trick is to try to allocate the memory you're going to need up front because yeah you're going to be memory intensive because you're going to be pooling objects and things like that so for example when you use object pooling it's probably a good strategy to know more or less the maximum number of objects you're going to be needing and pre-allocate your pool to start with those objects so that gives you a good idea of how much memory you're going to need and then gives you an option to configure your JVM with the max heap size so you don't get like a middle of the day out of memory error. So now let's code an example and see how this is in practice. Let's start by analyzing this class here. It's a simple parameters class. Basically, I'm going to pass a line containing a bunch of parameters and it's going to parse it and then I can get the first, the second and the third parameter it's zero base, zero index base, and I can get it as a string, and I can get it as an integer, and so let's execute this code to see how it works. I mean, it's it's really simple. So here, I have the the line that I that I'd like to parse into parameters. So I have, of course, three parameters here, and notice that I'm using minus verbose GC. I want to see what's going on if the garbage collector here. 
So when I execute that, of course, it parses the first parameter, the second, and the third. Everything works correctly. I can change this. And as you can see, you work as expected. I can even put some spaces here. You work as expected. So notice that we're not creating any garbage here because of course we're executing this code once. So let's change this code to execute it a million times. So now I'm gonna parse this line here a million times. And let's see what happens. So I'm doing some tests here to make sure I'm parsing it correctly. That's gonna be important when we change the code to be garbage free. And same code, we just like doing like a million times and checking. So now when I come here, and execute this code. Look what happens. He creates a lot of garbage. There's a lot of GC activity taking place here, as you can see. So why? I mean, a trained eye can easily see what's happening here. We are creating a new instance of this parents class on every iteration. That's gonna leak a lot of garbage to GGC. Not just that, our class itself is creating garbage here. It's creating garbage here when it, do, it does a split. So we have to fix that. So how, how do we go about fixing that? Well, let's go to this, this code here. First, let's see what we're gonna, what kind of like approach we're gonna to take here. We are gonna make the class params mutable. Notice that this class before was completely unmutable, meaning like you can only use it once with a single set of parameters. You cannot reuse it because it's an immutable class. So you want to make this class mutable. How do we do that? Well, we instantiate the class and then we allow the class to take many different lines. So we can keep reusing this class and giving like a new line and then it's gonna go and parse this new line and change these parameters and then you can reuse the same class multiple times. Another thing we're gonna be have we're gonna have to be doing here because now if you notice what I'm trying what we're trying to do here we are gonna have a array of string builders and inside this method here parse we are gonna parse the char sequence into many string builders. So when we return the string builder, we don't want to call to string on that. That's going to be creating garbage all the time. So we just return the string as a char sequence. I mean, it's not a string, it's going to be a string, a string builder, but you can treat a char sequence as a string easily as, as we're going to see later. So, so here we calculate the maximum number of parameters by using this this is easy formula here and we have the maximum number of parameters it's gonna be the size of the array of string builders and for it we, we create a string builder for each element with the max parameter length we have some default values here for this for those guys here we call the the constructor so the fun part comes here, and also notice that how do you parse a char sequence that is not a string to an integer? Again, you don't want to call to a string on the char sequence, you're going to be creating garbage here. So you want to parse the char sequence without creating garbage straight into an integer. So this can be done easily. I mean, not easy, but it can easily be done. <laughs> I don't know. What else to say but it's kind of boring because it's a lot of like parsing work and yeah you probably don't want to do that yourself i mean there's more fun things to do so let's use chat gpt to help us here so i'm gonna come here and tell what i want chat gpt to do here so first of all i'm gonna tell chat gpt to hey do not create any garbage so without creating any garbage, 
copy the arguments from the given char sequence line to the string builders inside the string builder array. That's what we want. We want without creating garbage, we're gonna take this chart sequence and copy into the string builders that are inside the array. So if I have three three parameters, I'm gonna use three string builders from my array. So cool. And here I also wanna ask ChatGPT for some help. So I'm gonna do parse the corresponding string builder from the corresponding uh, params string builder array to an integer, but without creating any garbage. If I don't say that, ChatGPT is gonna call to a string and then use it, use integer parse int which is exactly what we don't want, right? We don't want to call to a string on this. So I'm going to tell ChatGPT here, like we dog creating any garbage. Hopefully if the caps is going to pay attention. So great. So now I copy this whole code here and I go to ChatGPT. I'm using the 01 model. Okay, I, I parse this code here, but before let's tell ChatGPT what to do here. So the code below has some comments with instructions of what I would like you to do. Please add the described code right after the comments so that the program works as expected. Great, so now let's give it to ChatGPT. It's gonna think a little bit. Well, we can see it fought about 14 seconds and it gave us the code. Great, let's just copy this code and see if it works. So we're gonna copy this whole thing here. All right, I'm gonna copy this thing here. I'm also gonna copy the the parsing for an integer code. So the code is compiling. That's promising. So let's execute this again. So now I'm gonna do a this is my code right here. And let's see what happens. Whoa, so it's like much faster and it does not create any garbage at all. You don't see any GC activity, so it's a double win here. First, the code is executing, is executing much faster with much lower latency. And second, there is no GC overhead. You can use this code like a million times, a billion times, and you're not going to see any GC activity. Of course, you should check the code that TapTPT gave you to make sure it's not doing anything silly. But yeah, if you go check, it looks like it's doing a great job. It's it's looping and it's even checking for for uh, trading spaces and and trimming. It's resetting the the string builder. Yeah, it's 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 doing a pretty good job. Uh, it's copying char by char. It's incrementing the number of parameters uh, correctly and also when the code is reused it resets the number of parameters to zero so it looks efficient and correct to me so that's great and last but not least you definitely want to add some automated tests to to test what ChatGPT is doing right you didn't write the code yourself so you better be testing and yeah, you should test for some edge cases on the parameter lines, adding some spaces. I mean, it will work, but some tests is there. It's definitely a good idea. And that's it. I hope that was useful. 
and I'll see you in another video.